Hello foodies, welcome to my channel. My name is Nimo and today we are going to be making these soft layered Kenyan chapatis. The recipe I'm about to share with you is super super simple and easy to follow and delivers the absolute best results. As you can see, this is the chapati that I made and the layers are coming apart easily. The chapati is soft and the browned parts are super, super delicious. I can't wait for you to make this for you and your family. For this recipe, you're going to need one kg of all-purpose flour together with 250 grams of dusting flour, 500 to 600 ml of lukewarm water, salt and sugar to taste, and half a cup of cooking oil. You'll begin by adding one and a half tablespoons of sugar into the lukewarm water and half a teaspoon of local salt. Once you add those, you're going to stir until everything is completely dissolved into the lukewarm water. Add half of the water into a mixing bowl and then add in all of the all-purpose flour. Add in the rest of the water and mix everything well to combine. Always ensure that you have a little extra water. I had one cup of water for making any adjustments along the way. At this stage, your only goal is to mix the flour and the water until it becomes a firm dough that is no longer sticking to your hands or the sides of your bowl. This part requires a lot of patience, but the patience will pay off at the end. Remember to have your extra water and your extra flour so that you can dust every now and then when the dough becomes too sticky and if the dough is not coming together as soon as you would like it to. After a few minutes of kneading, your dough should look like this. It should become a little bit firm and no longer sticking so much to your hands or to the sides of the bowl. Pinch a small piece of the dough and taste it to check whether the salt and sugar are balanced. I like my chapatis a little bit salty, so I added a pinch, but you can always leave yours as you like it. And then after this step, add in the half a cup of cooking oil. You should only add in the oil once the water and the dough are well mixed together into a firm dough. So as you're adding the cooking oil, make sure to knead in the oil so that the oil and the dough now can combine well. You can always take the dough off the mixing bowl so that you have a nice working space or a wider working space that you knead the oil well into the dough or you can still continue kneading inside the bowl. Depends with whichever method that you're most comfortable using. Again, 
if you find that your dough is still sticking a little bit remember to dust your hands with the dusting flour so that it can stop sticking to your hands or to the sides of the bowl and it should be and the dough should remain as firm as possible not too firm but at least the standard should be it should no longer be sticking to your hands or to the sides of the bowl After a few minutes of kneading and the dough is no longer sticking to your hands or the sides of the bowl, your dough is now ready for the next stage. Clear your working area as you prepare for the next stage. And for this next stage, we're going to be making small sizable balls ideally the size smaller than a tennis ball and the balls should ideally look like this once you make your ball remember to dust it a little bit so that it doesn't stick to the surface you're going to place it on and also remember to keep the dusting flour close by so that once you make a ball dust it and then place it on the surface also remember that all your balls should be of the same size and ensure that they are well dusted so that they don't stick together or they don't stick to the surface once you're done take one of the balls and dust it again and roll it out into a flat circle Refill your oil if you ran out of the cooking oil and add one or two tablespoons of the cooking oil and spread it all across that circle. Once you're done adding the oil, fold it like this. And once you're done folding, stretch it a little bit and then fold it into a spiral ball. The spirals usually help create the layers in the chapati. So if you're keen about making soft layered chapati, this is a step that you shouldn't skip. Again, dust your spiral ball and keep it aside. We ended up making 16 individual balls from the 1 kg of flour. For the next stage, heat up your chapati pan. If you don't have a chapati pan, ensure it's a pan that has a thick base. And then top up your oil. This is half a liter of oil that I'm using. And then add one or two tablespoons of the cooking oil and spread it all over the pan. The heat is on medium as I only want to heat the pan up. Also remember to prepare where you're going to be keeping your chapatis once they're cooked. I always use this wide sufuria lined with kitchen towel to absorb any moisture. So you can use that or a hot pot. Once you prepare the three items, take one of the spirals, dust it a little bit and then spread it into a nice circle. Remember not to spread it out too thin because if you make it too thin then your chapati is going to cook fast and it's going to dry out and we want to keep our chapati soft and moist once your circle is well done add your chapati into the hot pan and let it cook for a minute or so as you spin it gently you can let it cook for a minute or until you start seeing air bubbles forming on the chapati the spinning usually helps create the nice browning patches on a chapati and they make a chapati look delicious so once the air bubbles start forming it means the chapati is cooking turn the chapati and add two to three tablespoons of cooking oil as you continue to spin the chapati again 
remember to spin the chapatis every once in a while and you can do this either with a spoon spatula or your hand if you use your hand remember to be very careful not to burn yourself and you can you can always use maybe a food grade silicon gloves so that, which are heat resistant so that you don't get burned from the heat and the steam and the oil from cooking the chapatis cook the chapati until the bottom side starts browning up this is ideally around two minutes and once you're happy with the browning turn the chapati and brown the other side again don't be too mean with the cooking oil add as much cooking oil as you need because you don't want your chapati to be dry and hard also i'll remind you keep spinning the chapati as often as possible for the nice brown patches like the ones on this chapati once you get a good browning on both sides take the chapati off the pan and add it and place it into your hot pot or a sufuria like mine and then repeat the same same process with the rest of the spiral balls again please use medium heat because if you use a lot of heat you end up cooking your chapatis too fast and burning them so you won't get the best results if you cook with high heat Finally, I'm done making all the chapatis. This is my 16th chapati and I can't wait to sit down and enjoy the chapatis with a nice stew and veggies like amadondo stew, dengu stew, minji stew or even a hot cup of tea. This is one of the chapatis we've just made. Look at the beautiful brown spots. The chapati is super super soft and you can serve it in any way. You can fold it up, you can chop it up in small pieces and add it into your stew. You can roll it up like this if this is how you like your chapati served. And look at how easy it is to tear into the chapati. The layers are tearing very very easily and i hope when you get to make this chapatis you'll get the exact results as i did if you like this recipe video don't forget to like share and subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel and if you get to make this recipe also comment below and let me know that you stopped by and you made the recipe and how you found it until next time thank you so so much for watching and bye bye